Finally getting back in the shop. We've got kind of a cool, muggy, miserable day outside, so it's a perfect day to uh, get in the forge and try to do some stuff. Um, I need a dishing hammer. Uh, I need to do some blocking and some panel fabrication for some of my car stuff. And uh, yeah, it's something I've been meaning to do for a while. And I've got this like concrete breaking chisel thing. I think that's what it's supposed to be. I'm not sure where this came from. But uh, in any case, it's a found piece of metal. Uh, I'm assuming I'm going to be able to harden it. Uh, I might do a test piece on it a little bit later, see what it, uh, see what it wants to do. Um, but I'm just basically going to take about half of it and uh, uh, use this end to make a hammer. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to hot cut this because I can. Actually, just sheared a piece off of it. <laughs> and again, that's why you're not supposed to strike tools with mushroom dens. smaller hammer, pulling down the corners, letting it mushroom, because this is going to be domed. And since I don't have a fancy grinder, every uh, bit I can do with a hammer is something I don't have to do with a angle grinder. Okie doke. Now I'm going to flip it around and put an eye in it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> this is a like 4130 sucker rod, 5 Oh, uh, it's clearly not hardened all the way through, but I'd have thought it'd do a little bit better than this. Granted, I am beating the hell out of it.
Ah, there we go. Finally pierced. Take a little bit of work to get that rag out of there now. Ooh, I probably should have cooled that down first. Apparently I drove that into the corner of the hardy hole. on this side. Our cheeks are a little uneven. Ooh, that's warm still. 
Plus I got a hole in my glove right there, so. grinding and uh, heat treat it throw a handle on it Let that be a lesson about buying cheap abrasives. This doesn't need to be perfect. Ultimately, this is a rough out hammer anyway, so this'll be good enough. I think I'll finish the rest of it with the die grinder and a roll lock wheel. So we're close enough, I think. I'm gonna get it hot. 
I, I put some dents in it up here that I don't like and uh, I'll probably use the horn on the anvil to try to uh, clean this up a little bit, that up a little bit. We pushed it in a little bit right here. Same right here. So I want to clean that up before I try to grind down the cheeks. Um, and if I can get it clean enough, I'd prefer to not grind anywhere except for just the face. I'd like to leave it just as forged. I might clean up the heel a little bit just for S and G's. end a little bit and uh, throw it back in the fire and we'll uh, uh, see if we can't temper it. tricky doing this in the forge because we don't want the uh, the eye to get hot enough that it'll harden when I dunk it in the water to stop the tempering process. Oh. But we also want to make sure that the heat goes deep enough that we actually temper it all the way through to the core. We'll go ahead and kick the forge back on. go slowly because we want it to heat through the center. Make sure my camera's not going to melt. <laughs> having a hard time getting the colors to really show on the camera. But there's just a tiny bit of purple starting to peek through there. The smoother this end of the eye is, the longer your handles are gonna last. But that should be about it for the eye hole. It's nice and smooth in there now, at least on this side. I don't really care about the other side. Ah. 
That is pretty close. A little bit high right there. Oh yeah, I can see it in the reflection from here. Alright, I think that's going to be good enough for the girls I go with. I'm going to switch this over to a uh, surface conditioning disc. This is like a Scotch-Brite with aluminum oxide embedded on it. That's probably as much as we ever need to go. But I do have one grade finer. So, why not? Alright, that is definitely as far as I'm going to go now. <laughs> I think that's about as pretty as this needs to get. See, now we've got a nice ring of contact all the way around. So it's all done and I'm pretty happy with it. I messed up the handle a little bit when I was uh, shaping it for the eye. Uh, I took a little bit too much off the top before I realized where it was actually going to sit. So I don't think this handle is going to last very long before it starts to come loose. Um, but uh, it's not a big deal. I just make another handle. I'm thinking probably on my next hammer I'm going to uh, not drift the the back side quite as much as I did here. Um, I put quite a bit of a taper on them uh, on the handle side and uh, I'm thinking the opposite I might need to leave a little bit straighter. It's done. It's work. It works. I'm ready to put it to work and get on to my next project. Thanks for watching.